Hello, fellowship gathers. What a wonderful, wonderful, special time. A special time of the year to reflect upon Messiah. To reflect upon how our candle is standing in heaven. Meaning, are we a part of this candle? Are we a part of truth? Are we a part of the Word, who was the Word, became flesh, came to earth, lived, taught the kingdom of heaven at hand, which is now the kingdom is at hand, and was crucified and died for us to have a chance to be seeing the Redeemer redeem us and us be able to be a part of the new kingdom, the kingdom that will never be brought to ruin, the kingdom that is everlasting. Messiah Yahushua, he gave his life, his blood covers us, a multitude of sins, but it's also not just the grace, but because sin is so evil, and sin is such a catastrophe to the flesh, we needed a Redeemer, and our Redeemer will draw nigh, he will come for his children, and our Heavenly Father will show us and teach us understandings of the Holy Scriptures, the prophecies that are to be fulfilled even still now, this day, are coming about so quickly. I leave you this picture in natural, physical now, so you can see the candle, so you can see the glory, the gold and the, the beautiful colors of, of the flower blooming and all the leaves of that tree and that branch and what it would look like to be in that perfection of holiness, perfection of knowing you repented and you came to the accurate knowledge which turned into wonderful wisdom the Father put on your heart. And you were able to learn about him, truly learn about him, and know whose voice you're hearing and who you are following. Now, many people like to say that this is a time of Hanukkah, December 6th through December 12th. And actually, the word Hanukkah would not be a word I would normally use. However, in ministry, I have found, even in the stores, if I'm out, that that is the only name that many understand and I, I noticed you know with everything that's going on in Israel but and also in Syria right with Russia and Syria that many things are happening where here in the US when we talk about Jew we talk about Hebrew they don't understand Hebrew not many in my regular daily life would understand Hebrew they wouldn't understand who a, what a Hebrew would be, who it would be, the remnant, the remaining remnant. And as we're grafted in with Israel, and as we are from tribe of Judah and also all the other tribes, and everyone is coming under one body of Christ, under one remaining congregation, one united fellowship under our Messiah and Heavenly Father, that we would all unite as one. But... And we're not talking about the new, the, the last kingdom that will rule. We're not talking about those that would serve under Jacob, under Judah, under the tribes of Israel in that kingdom. Those that have, what, uh, put into captivity will go into captivity. So we know that that will happen. But that's not what we're, I'm speaking of right now. Fellowship gatherers, what I'm speaking of is the remnant that is looking for Messiah. To meet us. We are going to meet him. We are going to be caught up to meet him. Now, I bring this to your attention with the candle because 
Many like to take this time and say that this time is about oil. Oil lasted the eight days. No. You see, in, first, in Maccabees, which is in the Apocrypha, chapter 3, I just want to read 1 through 3. It says, Then his son Judas, called Maccabees, rose up in his stead, and all his brethren helped him. And so did all they that held with his father. And they fought with cheerful the battle of Israel. So he got his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him. And he made battles, protecting the host with a sword. In his axe he was like a lion and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is there was some vexing going on. You see, at that time there was a horrific, horrific uh, type of spiritual battle as well where... The Maccabees, at that time, when those who really put forth Messiah, okay, um, this is way before the time of Messiah. What I'm, what I'm trying to express is those that put, and not Messiah, but those who trusted in the Most High, they completely uh, understood that truth was to follow the laws of Most High. The commandments. See, they, it wasn't about uh, following the pagan ways of the world. But yet, we know just as the Roman Empire today, and at that time, just as the same with Persian Empire, they wanted to keep them from worshiping in the right way. And so, because of this, there was a time when Messiah walked. Now, this is once Messiah was on earth. Okay, he was then made flesh, the word was made flesh, and he was then born, okay, of a wonderful, wonderful Mary, who was a virgin, and Joseph and Mary raised him, okay, in the eyes of the Most High. And we know that there is nowhere in Scripture that says that Messiah partook of what they would call the Hanukkah time, which would be the Feast of Lights, but it's actually the Feast of Dedication. He walked through the temple. And see, we must understand that Messiah, Yahushua, he, he was and always is the light. You see, the light. So it's not about eight days of light, okay? It originally would have been six candles with the seventh in the middle. Um, now, we have seen things come to pass. We have seen Messiah come. He was the Word. And then he became flesh. He was crucified. And then there was Pentecost where there was Holy Spirit received. And I mean fire of Holy Spirit. Now, we look at the New Testament. We look at the times now from Matthew on. And we go into Scripture. The first night... Uh, how my children and I, how we are observing this, is the first night we're reading Psalms 27, 1 through 3. The second night, which we've been yesterday, Monday, we're reading Psalms 119, 130. Night 3, Matthew 5, 16, which I will also leave below in the description box. Night 4, Acts 26, 18. Night 5, John 8 through 12. Night 6, Ephesians 5, 11 through 15. Night 7, uh, night 7. 1 Peter 2, 9. Night 8, Philippians 2, 14 through 16. Now, this is all scriptures about light. And, I, and there's, there's many, many more scriptures that apply to this. But this is not um, something that's ritualistic. This is not something that is religious or pagan or giving gifts during this time. For my family, what we are doing, and this is the first year that we are fully taking note of this, but this is not something, we're not following a Jewish holiday. What we are doing is we are taking time to understand the light of Christ, the light of Messiah. And each night we're sitting down and we're, we're having uh, uh, treats together, but what we are doing um, is we're thinking about the type of foods that we would have eaten at that time. We're also thinking about the light. What is the light? Who is the light? Are we the light? Are our candles um, burning? 
Okay, our lamp burning, waiting for Messiah, the bridegroom, to come for his bride. Are we the wise virgins or are we the unwise virgin, virgins? And that's what I would like to, uh, to uh, accentuate today, to, to explain. And I say accentuate because I want to make sure that you understand the eloquence of the glory and royal family that is in heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? The royalty. Messiah was not walking around like the Pharisees and Sadducees. He wasn't in all of this um, garb that made him look better than anyone else. It wasn't about money or prosperity. It was about the richness of the kingdom, the truth of the word, the heart of the word, the truth. The compassion of those who were orphans and widows, those who were poor, even prostitutes, those who had been broken, the ones that were really lost. He wanted to teach them that by coming through, going through him and learning the truth and ascending up to the Father in faith and, and, and changing themselves into a new person, what that would bring into their life. There is so much going on in the world today, so much taking place. We see as there's rumors of World War III, as there's rumors and talks of climate change, as there's rumors and talks of this pagan holiday and that pagan holiday and how it's no longer supposed to be about truth and, and um, even the truth of when Messiah was actually even conceived or even born. Uh, times of, uh, you know, we may not know the true conception, but we know around, around the time he was born, and it wouldn't have been on December 25th. Just as they speak as Hanukkah is not a time to try to mold into the Christianity of celebrating Christmas and having tons of gifts and exchange and changing things. No, this is not about the oil. This is about where we have been, where we have come to, where we are going. Who is Christ? Who is Messiah? This is a time that we can take the opportunity to teach young ones. So I'm not saying it has to be something you do. I am saying that for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. We shall observe truth in all the feasts. And it is in the Holy Word. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to tell you that if you go to Leviticus, You see, in Deuteronomy, it talks about all the curses that would come upon uh, the nation of Israel, and, and mostly because there was the, de the deceiving in Egypt, and when they were in the wilderness, they weren't appreciating the manna. They were fully not seeing what they'd been blessed with. You see, there was a lot for Moses to be, um, to be conflicted with. He, it, it, was a, it was a responsibility, a large responsibility. And we have the feast here, so I'm just going to talk about the feast. You know, we have the Passover, the unleavened bread. Of course, we have the Sabbath, Shabbat. We have the feast of fruits, the feast of weeks, the feast of trumpets, the feast of tabernacles. Now, I want to go into talking about the lamp. Now, we're going to talk about Leviticus chapter 24, verse 1 through 4. It says, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure oil of preserved oil, of pressed oil, excuse me, of pressed olives for the light. Let me repeat that. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to make the lamps burn continually. Outside the veil of the testimony in the tabernacles of meeting, Aaron shall be in charge of it from evening until morning. Before the Lord continually, it shall be a statue forever in your generation. He shall be in, a, in charge of the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. So that would be that seven lampstand. The bread of tabernacles, you could go on and read where it says, And you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it. Two tenths of an ephah uh, shall be in each cake. You shall, get, you shall set them in two rows, six in a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. 
and you shall put pure frankincense on each robe, that it may be on the bread for memorial, an offering made by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by the everlasting covenant. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat in an holy in it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him, from the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. Now we know Messiah came, and Messiah then was the Lamb. But what I'm trying to express here is that there was a time in Leviticus, there was a time when outside the veil of the testimony in the tabernacles of meeting, Certain things took place as in the holiest sacred place of the tent, of the tabernacle, of where there was not just sacrifice, there was burnt offerings, there was also the understanding of who our Father was, who Yahuwah was, okay? And as many they may say, Hashem, okay, which is the Lamb, the actual blood sacrifice, the covenant. And you could also understand hash, Hashem, okay? Um, and I don't want to get too technical here and get too too deep into this, of this part. What I want to explain and express is the time that we are taking to be compassionate to others and what they're going through. And as we merge and, and we graft in this remaining remnant, as we come together in fellowship each week on Sabbath, as we come together and we gather as not just a nation, okay, of Israel, but we are coming as a nation where we are under the Most High, we are under His kingdom, His rule, His reign, His sovereignty, and we are coming as wanting to know the truth, wanting to know that our light won't burn out because we are continually keeping it lit. We are wanting to know the deep parts of heaven. We are wanting to know the calling on our life. Why we you know it says many are called but few are chosen. What part do we want to be in this? What part of this manifestation of truth and understanding, what part of this holiness do we want to be a part of? Do we want to walk fully in Messiah's path? Do we want to follow him? Do we hear his voice? Do we follow? Are we following that lamb? Are we following Messiah, who was the true lamb? Are we following and loving him? Are we knowing him? Are we knowing the secret hidden place of the heart, the how the Holy Spirit works within us to change our hearts? Are we wanting to know the secret, secret depth that is not going to be secret forever? But see, our eternal, our eternal, everlasting covenant that is presented here. Are we wanting to know more about our Father? Are we just looking at the basic, the simple bread of life that may have a lot of leaven, which is could be sin, but I mean a lot of leaven with yeast and everything in it? Or are we learning about the purity, the branch, or the tree of life, the, the, the purity, the love? Now, if you turn over to Psalms, there's an area in Psalms that I truly like to get into right now. Um, it's, it's been a, a great healing um, for myself in, in these oppressed times, these persecution. You know, we pray for those that are persecuting us and we love our enemies. But I will tell you, I guess I have even been very persecuted lately. lately not lately, excuse me, excuse me lately. Um, with situations with family and things that have taken place and it's an everyday process it's 24 7 you are what you are rejoicing in the Lord you are taking delight in him so if you look at Psalms now if you have the, the New King James it's going to be on page starting 425 and if you go to Psalms 119 meditation of the excellencies of the Word of God it's going to give you Hebrew letters okay Chalef. So you start there, Psalms 119, and you go all the way through. Now there's Beth, there's Gimel, there's Delech, there's He, Ha, Zachin, Hes, okay, Yod. So, Kaf, so, and some of my might not be all the way to your liking if you are speaking fluent Hebrew. 
Um, but I want to say that these are the deep, deep parts of the heart. Deep, deep parts of purity. Deep, deep parts of agape love, truth, purity, holiness, truth, understanding of Messiah. Before he was made flesh, you see, and who our Heavenly Father was, Most High Yahuwah, who he was, who Ahia was, who this Heavenly Father was, what the Word was, keeping the commandments of our Heavenly Father, all of that. So when I say when I say Messiah and then I say Heavenly Father, understand that yes, the Holy Spirit joins in this in this uh, threefold. We want to know what the fold is. We want to know what the threefold is. We want to understand even heavenly first, and uh, I say the, the 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 we have the earth and we have the water on, on the the ground, right? Which would, which would be earth and the soil and dust, and then we have heavenly. Okay, and we have the highest part of the heavenly, which is where our Father resides. Now, there are many different parts to heaven. And what I mean by that, I don't want to say levels, but there are different heights, widths, depths to heaven, as with earth. And, and it's not about dimensions. See, we're not getting into that symmetry of all that false stuff. We're talking about our Father is the mathematician of all. He is the genius. He is, he knows all. You see? So, when it comes to depth, when it comes to knowing the deep, the depth of him, when knowing how wide his kingdom is, how, how wide is it? Pearly gold, how, you know, how far does it stretch? We don't ever want to put him in a box. And this is what mankind has come to do in this, uh, this 21st century, this, this time, this period of, Oh, we are gods ourselves, and we, you know, we can go up to the heavenlies. And the way they, they make the universe and the space look is not as the heavenly is. There's been a lot of lies and deception of what the heavens look like and what they call outer space, okay? So why I say this is when you start to get into the Word, into, you let Messiah come in, you let Christ come in your heart, that Holy Spirit is going to teach you through this part of Psalms, all the way up, Psalms 119, all the way through Psalms 1, all of 119, which is all, goes all the way to verse 176. Take the time, if you can this week, and read that. It will open your eyes to so much. You see, one verse I want to read in here. It says, verse 47, And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. Now what are the Father's statutes? What are Abba's statutes? This is what we need to understand. What does he want us to understand? What are the precepts? Precepts. What are his commandments? Are we putting those commandments on our heart? Are we now laying them on our heart as in the New Testament? Are we writing them on our hearts? Are we wanting to live by them? And yes, we sometimes we fall, we make mistakes. We are not in that full perfection yet. But as we can control the flesh, as we're learning to fully push the flesh aside and not, not uh, as, how do I say this, we would resist the devil, we'd resist that deception, because all he wants to do to adversary is to keep us from heaven, right? Which, if we, our first love was our Father, we want to go back to him. So, as we push that temptation out, and we try to resist that temptation, we can resist it. Now, some will try to push us to that ultimate level. They will try to insist and try to control and try to make us sin. You see, because the devil promotes and and uh, has those out there that he is pushing to push you. And they come against you. They come around you. It could be anything in any situation. That's why we're constantly having to be in high meditation of prayer and supplication. Prayer in the scriptures. Read these verses. Really take the word to heart. Let the living word come alive as Messiah is completely telling you everything. And because Messiah wasn't here and until into that New Testament, what? But the Old Testament, the Torah, the beginning, right? What was the Heavenly Father? It was Word becoming manifested here in the Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures. We can understand it. 
We can take time to meditate upon the word. Look it up. See what it means. What's the meaning of it? What is the uh, origin of it? And, and find out all different meanings of that word. And that's how you're able to present to anyone and able to go teach. And, you know, for myself here, when I'm making a video... Uh, this part of the, the this part particular part of the ministry, it is a lot of prayer upon what I want to say because I, it's not what I'm saying; it's what the heavenly Father's telling me. Now I'm trying to translate and I'm trying to interpret what He gives me based on what the Scriptures say, based on prayers, time spent with Him in worship and praise. Okay, and so this week. What I'm saying is this is a time to get to know that. This is a time to maybe even um, go into understanding the care of the tabernacles of the lamp and, and just going back through the feast days and, and just reading that part of Leviticus chapter 23 or 24 and preparing for Sabbath. Now, um, and then also if you have an apocrypha, going to Maccabees and looking at that first, second, and third chapter as well. Um, so those are the scriptures I had. Now, you know, a lot of people... Some, some that are not um, truly believing that Messiah was uh, our King, He was the Redeemer, the Savior, that He was born in Bethlehem, that He, um, that He even was here on Earth. For those that are just taking that Jewish uh, symbol, they might be celebrating Hanukkah with the Barak at the Adonai Elohinu uh, Melek. So blessed are you, Lord, Yahuwah Abba Most High. Now I added some words into this of what I am seeing the Heavenly Father tell me about this time period, whether I should observe it, whether I shouldn't, how I should deal with it. Um, and I have Hashem, Sovereign of the Universe, Asher, Kedisha Nahu, but Mitzra, Vatavit. Who has sanctified us with his commandments and command us? Now there is, you know, there are some that don't do the a lot in the the accentuate letters in Hebrew. And, and as I'm learning more, the deepest part of what my heavenly Father wants me to know and understand, it says, "Who has sanctified us with his command commandments and commanded us?" Okay, to light the lights of Shabbat. Amen. So. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So to light uh, the, the light of Shabbat. Now, the Heavenly Father has given us the light of the world. Messiah. Jesus the Christ. In English, Jesus the Christ. Okay, so Greek, they said Jesus. Now, Yahushua, Ha Mashiach. He is the Mashiach. Okay? And um, he, is, he is the king. He will rule. He will reign. For that time, he will reign. He's always been at the he's at the right hand of his father. He has always been who we go through to get to our father. And you cannot get to the father except through Messiah. Okay, through him, meaning that he is the path, the way, the light, the truth. He, and as we understand this, if you want to take these words into these words into Hebrew and break them down and understand the different parts of um, the Heavenly Father and um, understanding Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, and you can understand that, you can look that up, you can go to the lexicon, the Hebrew lexicon, and look there, but I don't like to call it the Feast of Lights, many people say the Feast of Lights, so I'm calling it the Feast of Dedication because that's what it says in the Holy Word. But we know that we are dedicating ourselves to Messiah. We are dedicating ourselves to follow Him, to walk in His path, to be the light as well. You know, when I had those two visions, um, there was the two candles, and I didn't understand exactly what they meant at that time. I, I knew partially what they meant, and more and more the Heavenly Father is waking me up. And Messiah is, is giving me um, this complete understanding and teaching on what these candles mean. And then there is the three candles that I showed you the other day that I was going to make a calendar uh, with three candles in the front of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the threefold. And also, um, you know, you have first, second heaven, and you go on to third heaven. So and that was also talking about two understanding and understanding of the Heavenly Father. And then, uh, and that was in 2012. 
So now here in 2015, coming to a close of 2015, as we are getting ourselves completely renewed, completely trying to uh, ward off anything from the adversary, like keep him at a distance completely. We don't want him anywhere near us. We want to bind and rebuke all that in Messiah's name, always. And uh, we want to ask for protection over our home with the, um, from our Father and that the archangels are protecting our home when we walk, when we're out about in our path. The world is getting very dark. There are many that are not seeing the moon. So things are taking place at a rampant, uh, rapid pace. Prophecies are being fulfilled. It's, uh, things are happening so quickly. But as we remain, you see this white purity in this candle? Okay, the wick is short, but, but we know that if we light it, I didn't want anything to catch on fire right now, but if that was lit, how it would, what, give more light at night in a dark world. See, this is what we want to understand. And I only have one there because I want to make this clear. It's not about the eight candles, okay? Um, it was actually a seven lampstand, seven candle for lampstand, um, with the one in the middle that was higher. It was not eight. That's something that came over time. That's something that went into Judaism and then, you know, summer into the Kabbalah. And this, this was, became a pagan situation, just the star of Moloch, the star of Solomon, that what he was trying to control the demons when Solomon um, was having a lot going on when he had married a Babylonian woman. So at that time, he was trying to control demons. And I've said this in many videos um, in the past, not recently, but a while back. So, um, and that's a whole nother subject. But to, to say that, you know, that star in itself is not the star. Now, the star that would be the what star that went over Bethlehem. Now, this is this is a very interesting thing because many talk about stars and astronomy and astrology. Now, we know that Abraham knew of the stars because the Heavenly Father blessed him with that. That was something he understood because Messiah wasn't there teaching at that time. So he trusted in the Heavenly Father. He trusted in Yahuwah Most High. He trusted in Ahiah, our Father. He trusted in Him, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he trusted in Him. And he was able to understand things by, you know, you had the precipitation of air. You had things that were going on in the sky. The stars are there to what? Light up the sky. They're not there for us to study the way these astronomers study and they get into astrology and numerology and all that. No, our Heavenly Father is a mathematician. Our Heavenly Father has design numbers, words, everything. So, yes, there is a part we have to understand of the stars and so forth. And so we are looking for Messiah. We are looking for not signs as, you know, some have to see a sign. But we are understanding some things that are taking place in the natural world. But before they take place in the natural world, we see it take place in the spiritual realm. And that's when you're praying and when you're having your time and you're hearing the voice you're hearing the voice of the Heavenly Father speak to you, and you're hearing Messiah tell you, listen to what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying, okay? Hear what I'm telling you to do. Hear how I'm telling you to walk. Hear how I'm telling you to separate from uh, the harlotry. Hear how I'm telling you to come out of her, out of Babylon. Hear how I'm telling you to separate, that there's a division of the wheat and tares. There's a division between those that are practicing iniquities and those that are not, that want a pure life. There is obviously things we can see in the sky. Okay, there's drones. There's FBI helicopters, you see. There's newscasts. Uh, taking pictures of things that are taking place like accidents that may happen or floods or um, hurricanes, you name it, okay? But we, so we do see what takes place in the sky, but we're not to study the sky as in the scientists where they're so worried about space and so worried about the dark matter and everything else with the CERN and that, that they are what? They're going into the darkness instead of the light. On the opposite, we as believers, we that follow Messiah, we that know who Christ is, we understand that there was that wonderful, beautiful star. And so when, when many say we are to follow the star, we to, are to follow um, the light, we are to follow Messiah. We are to follow that because why? It gets extremely dark at night. And that's what the Heavenly Father did. He created the stars and the moon to have some light because during the day where the children of, of the day, children were light of the world, were salt of the world, right, as we're seasoned. So it's bright during the day, but then what happens at night? It gets a little bit dimmer, 
okay? We don't want our light to fully go out. And that's what I'm trying to focus on this week with expressing this to you. So it's just time to really get into scriptures. Appreciate family. Be thankful and um, of the blessings we've received. Um, you know, talk to the Heavenly Father. What blessings have you seen happen to those that are maybe don't have a home, those that are really hurting, those that are sick, have ailments, you know, those that aren't warm at night? Um, are we praying for the lost souls, the lost sheep, the, the ones that, that really, really just don't understand right now, really lost? Um, for those of the evil and the wicked, the elites, all the things that are taking place in the, in the higher up secular world, you know, we can only pray that they wake up, but it's kind of happening where things are at this point where the time is not left anymore for us to focus so much on that. We have to focus on who is taking the interest and we need to really help them with that. Okay, whether it be emails, whether it be writing in, um, in uh, sending them something in the mail, whether it be a postcard, whether it be doing a video, whether it be presentations, whether it be women's forums, whether it be some sort of um, encouragement meeting, anything to talk about the kingdom at hand, okay? The kingdom to come, the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, going and being uh, washed clean, that your garments are clean, that they're unspotted. So uh, let me think here. What I wanted to say, the scripture that was coming to mind, give me just a moment, I had it written down, and this was the scripture I was looking up last night, and Abba was really telling me to go here and look so I could fully understand this time right now, this time. Give me just a moment. Okay, and I, I did want to say this as well uh, while I'm looking for this scripture. That uh, the candlesticks threefold, okay, so we're talking about threefold. We're talking about the light and the truth and the word and the holy scriptures um, and dedicating our lives to our Father, okay, understanding and receiving Holy Spirit, fully Holy Spirit, um, that the Holy Spirit guides and directs us to make right decisions. It all, uh, the Holy Spirit also is a witness to things that convict our heart, not, uh, not to keep us under condemnation, but we want to, we want to repent. We want to, um, as we're working through things, to get better, that we're not going through the same um, sins the same way, that we are, you know, oh, no, I cannot do that. If you have to stop, no, I, I do not want to take that. No, you cannot come around me with your curse words. No, you cannot come around me with your your um, pride. No, let's not be um, disrespectful or let's not be selfish and help our children to, to come to this full understanding. And it is, a, it is a very deep process. I mean, especially for an adult to get it. And then for us to teach our children, our teenagers to understand it is even harder. And sometimes seniors who maybe have dementia and they've went into the first stage of Alzheimer's, you know, or someone who's diabetic and may have mood swift changes or someone who's bipolar. And, and I don't like to put names on things, but this is what the medical researchers say. So I'm just, I'm just bringing up different areas so we understand what we're working with. But a lot of that comes from demon activity. A lot of that has to be rebuked and bind it up and those demons sent back into their wicked darkness, okay? But for some that are really just have mood swings, maybe, maybe they drink so much caffeine that their body could not produce the right insulin um, in their pancreas to regulate themselves. So now they have diabetes because they were drinking too much soda. They were perhaps eating too much fat. They have high cholesterol. Maybe they're not, they weren't able to get fresh fruits and vegetables, especially with the GMOs today, right, um, that, they're, that they're putting in our fruits and vegetables, especially at schools, but they weren't getting enough grains. Maybe they didn't understand how to make uh, uh, unleavened bread with barley or flat bread or understand to limit cheese at certain times of the year or milk at certain times of the year because we don't get enough sun, things like that. Understanding what vitamin D is, vitamin A, echinacea, valerian root, knowing um, silica, what, what helps our hair to grow if we have uh, hair loss. All these type of things, there's so much to know and so much to learn. And if your body is breaking down and you're having a hard time keeping your body sustained, how much harder is it to understand the spiritual realm and that what happens in the natural realm? Because everyone's looking for the natural. They want the here and the now, the quick and a hurry. That's not the way our Heavenly Father works. So we have to slow down, meditate upon His Word. 
hear the truth of it. Okay? So give me just a moment here. I'm going to go into Genesis. And that's where the Heavenly Father he wanted me to read this. And I sent out a, to uh, a few of you, did you just uh, subscribe to this particular video channel? And, oh, you have been such a blessing and support. We have talked on the phone. You've been so, we've shared trials and we've shared things that have taken place. And those that are that are new to this page, thank you so much. I pray that uh, it'll be a blessing to you. And please, fellowship, gather. Let us come together and let's become this, come into the, the bond of Christ and um, and become new. And also walk through that narrow path. And um, up, let's say up now. The candle's tall. Let's go up. So, um, and also to know that I do emails. So I sent out last night. I do emails. I, I'm sending the book through that way. Uh, that will be complete this weekend. I have that has to be complete this weekend. Um, things are coming in fast in the world where. You know, I don't know how much longer technology is going to work for us with these type of ministry. Um, and there's ministry outside of YouTube, way ministry outside of YouTube as well. Um, so here we're trying to reach those all over the world or those that maybe can only get on their phone or only can get to YouTube and they have no way to connect. So um, through mail, you can connect um, through voicemail on the phone. You can connect also through uh, your um, through a website that I'm creating or also through email okay at my gmail and that's the best way too and so i was sending um <clears throat> in genesis i was looking up the throne of <clears throat> heaven and the, and the part of the water that separates the earth and the mountains and um understanding fully where and how deep our heavenly father wants us to understand him so uh, by walking and following messiah and understanding the light and then we get it but here's what i want to explain this is something i had sent out it's about a three-page research and i sent that to a few that i subscribed to now some emails don't go through and i have no way to send it to you if you subscribe to this channel because it does not give me a clear way to send it to you so it might go to your google plus or your google docs so um that's also a question. If you want to send me a personal email, I'll leave my email down below, and I, that way I can maybe get a list. I would like to just send it to all subscribers. Is what I'm really trying to do is become this closer knit family in this channel, so we can, you know, even if we have another house that we're shepherding uh, into or that we are a part of, we still are all trying to go to to the same conclusion that we are on the same narrow path. Okay, so um, in Genesis, you know, the history of creation, if you go back and read chapter one and two, it really gets into a deep part of this. But I, I want you to understand, especially with this candle, and like I said, the seven lamps stand and understanding the light of the world, who the light is, what the light means and who Messiah is, what is he in our hearts, who is he in our hearts, what is the word that became flesh, um, the stars and, 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 and understanding we need to keep our oil um, our our lamp lit with with some oil, okay? Because we don't want to lose all our oil, and, and meaning the anointed oil. We don't want to lose that that connection to the Holy Spirit, okay? So I'm going to go here and read. Verse 14 says this: Then God said, "Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years." And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights. The great lights to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now this was like the vision I saw. It was literally dark. And I saw two candlesticks lit in heaven. I mean, actually I should just say out actually in the universe. And I'm going to say universe because it was... I wasn't um, in heaven and I was not on earth. And I, it, it was just two candlesticks. And that's what came to me. And it was like two minutes long. Okay. And I woke up. And I had just went to sleep. And that's what the Heavenly Father wanted me to see. So if you want to go back to that video. And you can understand that well. On that video of what the vision was that was given to me. It says, God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give them light on the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So right now we are being, there's a division happening. There's a dividing. There's a separation happening. 
complete separation of the wheat and the tares, you know, the barley from the tares, um, those that are, are wanting to go this narrow path and, and be able to attend the wedding feast and those that are lukewarm and don't want to be there at all. This isn't a time to play around, but we also know that we, we keep repenting. Why? Because even idle words in Matthew 12, 36 and 37, let not an idle word come out of your mouth, you know, that we would be judged for those words. We want to continually get better with that because as we are hopefully written in that book, the Lamb's Book of Life, right? The Book of Life, we want to know that as we were learning these lessons on earth, that we were getting better in um, controlling the flesh and being able to ward off that adversary and that enemy who doesn't want us to get where we're supposed to go. Okay, back to our first love. It says, so the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmaments of the heavens. Now, the Heavenly Father wanted me to understand this. It says above the earth, that there was water above the earth. This is, he wanted me to understand what firmament of the heavens mean. Now, if you want to know about that, email me and I will send you what I had sent to subscribers last night and, and two dear friends of mine last night. Um, and they know who they are if they're watching us. So um, I want to to express that, that the Heavenly Father, see where it says that was for uh, day and night. Okay, so just as now, like in the days of Noah, okay, when I had that huge that vision of, of actually drowning in a flood and the Heavenly Father pulled me up and I saw Messiah and I just went straight into the ark. Okay, so I saw slightly to the right of me, Messiah, okay, who was, who was further up, but, but I wasn't able to understand that Messiah was the light trying to teach me about the two candlesticks, and then I had the threefold understanding, and now I'm seeing 11-11 eleven, eleven all the time, so I, it's like I'm seeing four candlesticks all the time, every day, and I, I might wake up, it says 11-11, eleven, eleven. I might go to sleep, it's 11-11, eleven, eleven. I might look at the clock on the stove, and all of a sudden it says 11-11. Eleven, eleven. Now, many people say that's a time to wish or a time when the universe changes or a time where you're close to what they say, God. That's how they say it. And I've looked up different parts of what this means. But the Heavenly Father told me, go to Genesis chapter 1, the history of creation. He wants me to understand creation. And I've always been interested in creation. I've always been interested in understanding what happened before the creation and foundation of the earth. So I have a heavenly hope. That's, what, that's, that's my hope. Never understood this fully. Okay, it's been the last year I fully have understood who I am and what I am, what my purpose here on earth and, and, and the call that he has put on my life. Okay, earthly hope and then heavenly hope. And that's why the video said earthly hope and um, heavenly sanctuary, that last video, because it is important for you to understand, do you have a full earthly hope? Do you have a heavenly hope? What has the heavenly father told you? Allow him to give you visions and dreams if you ask for them. But understand, it will sometimes be what you don't want to see and it will sometimes be, it can be a little bit overwhelming at first. That's why we have to meditate upon the word. We have to meditate upon the prophecies in the word, we have to understand what's being fulfilled, what hasn't been fulfilled and what has been fulfilled and start really getting into the secret part of the Heavenly Father. The, the Holy Word was not just meant just to read and put it down. We want to read about the Pentecost. We want to read about, uh, we want to read the parts. Okay, so like if you go into Genesis, in my, in my Holy Word, I spent more on this Holy Word. It gives me the ancient Near East, the map. It gives me everything on Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, which is a Torah. Okay, a record of God's covenant and the implications of the covenant for human life and society. So I look at this. I want to understand what it means in the law of the Torah there. I want to understand who wrote each book. I want to understand each book. There's a, there are some things that were taken out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you it's true. Okay, the Vatican, the, the Roman Empire, the, the Vatican, the, the Catholic Church, they did take some things out where they would not allow things to be in the Holy Word. And we can go back to King James. I mean, that could be a whole nother video, okay? I don't want to get too into that. I'm just saying certain things that I want you to hear me. So you do the research. So you're researching that. And um, if you're already understanding all of this, if you already really fully are in that area, then you're not who I'm speaking with. You're just getting encouragement as a fellowship gatherer. But if you are a lost sheep or you're somebody who's not a believer or doesn't believe that the earth was created by the heavenly father you you know you just don't know what's going on in the world today you're you've tuned in right now and we 
I thank you. We all thank you. All of us, 37 who are who do tune into this when we when they do. Not everyone tunes in every video, but you know sometimes I have two views or nine views or five views, one view, zero views. It doesn't matter. It's, it's to edify. It's to say it and to to get out what the Heavenly Father wants me to say. But I do pray that yes. Um, that there could be a group of us that stick close together. We become that family, that fellowship, and, and individually get close to the Heavenly Father and truly take to heart what He is teaching us, okay? Truly, truly coming close to what He is saying. And understand that the day was the light, as Messiah is the light, right? And then what? At night, it gets dimmer, but there are stars, and there is the moon because the Heavenly Father made it apparent for us to see so we can still see what's going on in the sky and have light there. So if you read in um, chapter 1 of Genesis 14 through 31 there, you're going to understand a lot more about what I'm speaking about above earth, above the sky, what there is, okay? Because we've been lied to so much. And so for me now, um, I really am getting into what the Heavenly Father wants me to understand about the ferment heaven. Okay, and the waters above the ferment. He wants me to understand the, the dividing of the waters under the ferment. And he wants me to understand that there was light, which are the uh, light at night. And the separation of the light from the darkness, which is the day from the light. Okay. And uh, he wants me to understand the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, just as in verse 20 of chapter 1 of Genesis. And let birds fly above the earth across the face of the ferment of the heavens. He wants me to fully understand what his heavens are and the throne and his, his I'm going to say, his heavenly kingdom, his, his heavenly dwellings, okay? Um... And I'll go into, I'll get into more in the next video. Um, the last verse I want to say is this one verse here. Okay, now this goes into the fifth day, so this is where we are kind of at. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let birds multiply in the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. All right, you guys, enjoy this week. Silan Agreement. Shalom.